think what's changed in the past few years, though, or at least since I've been involved in the sector, we're increasingly seeing more people saying, you know, I don't want to build a $100 million business or a $100 million pound business. I'm looking to build an, a, an, a $1 million pound or a $1 billion business. Um, so I think the mindset from, and I know this is really cliched, um, but the mindset from um, places such as Silicon Valley is definitely um, permeating its way into the UK, which is, is great mm-hmm. to see. And there's definitely a lot more ambition. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably quite hard, though, to um, raise money from investors because um, as AI becomes increasingly more buzzwordy, um, mm-hmm. there's obviously a lot more scrutiny um, in terms of what investors are going to look at putting money into um, with regards to what other companies are doing in that similar space. Um, There's all sorts of different challenges that people kind of um, talk about when we meet with them and have conversations with them. You know, talent is a massive pain point, not just in AI, but in the whole tech industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. But especially when you talk about early stage um, AI businesses or even AI scale-ups, um, you know, founders are very well aware of the fact that they're competing with talent, not just with the big tech giants, which are obviously Facebook, uh, you know, Google, Amazon and whatnot, which actually have um, an increasingly um, felt presence here in the UK. But there's a lot of uh, incredibly bright minds when it comes to artificial intelligence in in academia and they're Mm -hmm. much more likely to perhaps buy into the premise of going to work at a tech giant that they are to go and work at a startup where that they've never really heard of um Mm -hmm. so the whole the whole play between um small businesses and tech giants is interesting um they're also competing in terms of data so the amount of data that companies such as apple facebook and whatnot hold on users that can ultimately be used to perfect algorithms is far greater than that held by early stage businesses yeah um so yeah there's a different like a whole different host of uh, of things that make the industry challenging but also quite exciting in my opinion mm-hmm just to follow up on what you said about uh, artificial intelligence being a buzzword, I feel that I heard this AI is very difficult to define, historically has been. Mm. And um, if I heard this definition that goes artificial intelligence is everything that, everything cool that technology can't yet do. <laughs> so it's like AI is something, and then once we achieve it, then this is not no longer artificial intelligence, or this is just narrow artificial intelligence. Mm. And then we kind of set another goal. But I feel that now with the how much of a buzzword and how much of a hot topic that can just kind of bring you dividends instantly, really. Uh, you know, because investors are, are, are jumping on, you know, obviously it's still difficult to raise money, mm-hmm. uh, yet it is still kind of a hot word that you can use to, you know, benefit your business. But I feel like that definition of uh, cool things that technology can't yet do is kind of diluted now because similar to similar to what you said about big data, we started calling things that we didn't use to call AI kind of AI in um, kind of post factum. Don't you feel that this is happening? Yeah, I think the industry in a lot of sense, like in a lot of respects is still very nascent, but it's definitely matured in the two, two, three years that I've been covering it, mm-hmm. um, which is, which I guess, like, yeah, again, is um, the uh, like natural state of progression. If I then compare it to blockchain, um, so, I would still obviously say that that industry in itself is quite nascent, but there's been a lot of changes in perceptions in terms of when I started writing about it, you know, people, especially from the corporate world, would Mm -hmm. often say it's an interesting technology, yet we feel like it's still looking for a problem to solve. Um, With AI, I don't think that's ever been the case. I think the problem has the problems sorry plural has always Mm -hmm. have always been clear and there's always been more of a like roadmap or mind map and yeah. in, in out, outlined um and so i think in that sense it's very much overtaken overtaken uh blockchain um but yeah i mean the whole definition around it you know there's obviously like neural networks and all mm-hmm. sorts of different things that i am not even going to pretend to understand because i often find that when i go out and meet people you know i gave a talk on ai and health tech 
um, about two years ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was there similarly to now talk about the technology from my perspective as a journalist. But I soon realized after I kind of um, walked into the room that I was there to give a talk to about AI to people that were like neuroscientists and, um, you know, brain surgeons and all mm-hmm. sorts of like really mm-hmm. cool and amazing jobs, um, which was quite scary. So um, I was very um, quick to kind of point out the fact that, you know, I wasn't there to like preach or um, talk about the technology in uh, in depth because ultimately yeah. that's not something that I feel comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. And obviously these people, you know, their, their understanding of the technology in terms of like the deep tech is far greater than mine will probably ever be. But I think mm-hmm. what was interesting looking back was the fact that the people in the room were all interested in the tech. They all wanted to learn more about it, and they all they were all there to figure out ways how to apply it within their own industry. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that is incredibly exciting. Uh, and in industries such as you know financial services, which is heavily regulated, to be able to leverage AI um, to kind of detect fraud or you know. Uh, figure out identity propositions similarly in the same way that people use blockchain but also Mm -hmm. then looking at it from a completely different perspective and you know being working as a practitioner or in the healthcare sector which similarly to financial services obviously you know is played with really old legacy systems um, Mm -hmm. but also if if it has the potential and we can unlock that to try and um, save lives um, so actually having a real impact on people's lives beyond saving money or making anything much more efficient when it comes to like business processes, I think that is incredibly, incredibly exciting.